everybody. This is Mr. Nolan, uh, and uh, what I'd like to go ahead and do today is to talk to you about um, mutations. Uh, what are they? How do they work? Um, we're going to look at how do we calculate rates of mutation and how can we um, illustrate that mathematically and show how they're passed down through generations. We're also going to, um, later, we're going to take a look at how can we apply this to chromosomes. You might have heard that term before, but how do we deal with mutations on chromosomes? Um, can we use this knowledge to help us understand D and D? So uh, we learned earlier that uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy is this really terrible genetic disease that uh, is uh, somehow inherited. And uh, people who get this disease kind of waste away. Uh, their muscles don't repair like they ought to. And uh, so we want to try to understand DMD a little bit better. So in order to do that, we have to understand mutations. Now, a mutation uh, is ultimately, if you go back far enough, if you use a little logic, a mutation is what caused DMD. So DMD results from a bad mutation that you can get. So we want to understand this better. Uh, and so we're going to look at a kind of DNA called uh, mitochondrial DNA. And then we're going to look at how can we model uh, this, this uh, mutating and then passing on through generations. We want to be able to illustrate mathematically how these mutations are created and passed down through the generations. This is to help us learn about DMD. So um, all of your cells have mitochondria in them. And mitochondria, that term might ring a bell for you. Uh, it is a, it's an organelle that's inside of your cells, and uh, mitochondria generate power for your cells. And so what happens is, uh, you might remember this from last semester, uh, sugar and oxygen come in, and then carbon dioxide and water come out, and uh, also it's producing energy. It's taking chemical energy from food, and it's producing uh, uh, movement and heat energy that uh, animals can use to function. Well, mitochondria have DNA inside there, actually. And uh, so although this uh, is only tangentially related to DMD, we want to understand how can, you, uh, how can you illustrate and show how mutations are passed on. And this is a really easy way to, to do this. So we want to try to illustrate this. So inside of mitochondria, there's some DNA. And conveniently for us, that DNA naturally mutates um, at a rate of, it's a very, very small rate. Um, and uh, also conveniently for us, uh, mitochondria are only inherited from the, from the matrilineal side of the family, which means from, from parents. Specifically, uh, it's inherited by, uh, from your mother. And so let's model this really quickly just to make sure that you understand what this sort of looks like. So you might remember from health class, or you might just know from general knowledge, that uh, in order to sexually reproduce, uh, something like a mammal, like a human, has to... Uh, take an egg, right, the egg produced by the female, uh, sperm produced by the male, and when these two cells come together, that results in fertilization. So the egg is fertilized by the sperm, and we end up with a fertilized egg. Now the egg and the sperm both have mitochondria in there. However, due to some sort of complex uh, biology, uh, the only mitochondria that make it into that fertilized egg are actually from the mother's egg, right, from the original egg. The mitochondria in the sperm are destroyed. They disappear. So the only thing the sperm delivers is some DNA, uh, some, some uh, DNA, and that DNA is not included in the mitochondria because those are destroyed. The only mitochondrial DNA that ends up in the fertilized egg is, uh, are the uh, mitochondria from mom's egg. So mom's mitochondria end up in that in that fertilized egg. Okay. So this is the this is actually really convenient because uh, the egg is not contaminated by any DNA from the mitochondria in the sperm. It only comes from the mitochondria in the egg. So we can use this very conveniently to trace what's called matrilineal uh, relationships through a sort of a family tree because we're only looking at the females. The male uh, mitochondria are destroyed. So let's look at how to do that. Um, but before we do that, I just want to kind of throw one quick assumption up here. And that assumption that I want to throw up here is that um, in this whole process of putting an egg and sperm together to produce an offspring, this eventually turns into a full-grown human, some mutation occurs. Now, for the sake of this activity, we're going to say 5%. So 5% of the DNA in the mitochondria mutate between the egg and then the fertilization, the fertilized egg. That's actually way too high. It's not actually that high, but for the sake of this exercise, we'll just say 5%. So this 5% is going to be important later um, for this activity that we're going to do.
Okay, so take note of this screen because this is a really important uh, sort of model for understanding what we're going to do next. So what I'm going to model for you here uh, is a way to show how the mitochondrial DNA is inherited in the females through a family tree over the course of time. Now, um, I'm going to show it one way. It is possible that you might use some logic and say, well, actually, it works this other way. That doesn't really matter for the sake of this class. I just want you to understand sort of the logic uh, that we're we're using here, because we need to apply this to DMD eventually. We have to be able to say, well, DMD, uh, you know, this affects mostly boys. We're going to look at mtDNA because it affects mostly girls and see how we can sort of, you know, apply that to DMD. So up here, we have, uh, we have some folks. We have some uh, mom and dad, and they are, uh, you know, this line coming down from them means they're having kids. And the lines that's touching the kids are their actual biological offspring. So this pair of parents has two daughters, one there and one there. Now these sons, it's important to note that these sons are marrying in from outside the family. They're not actually the sons of these parents, right? They're actually marrying in. So the only, the only children of this, this set of parents are these two daughters. Now, if it's true that 5% of our uh, mitochondrial DNA is mutated from mother to daughter, then we should be able to illustrate this. So what I've done here is I've kind of illustrated these, uh, put these little boxes in here, and these boxes represent the mitochondrial DNA of each female. And we're going to show how those mutations add up and how those are inherited over the course of time. So this is the uh, mitochondrial DNA up there. In fact, these are all mitochondrial DNA. And if you look really closely, you'll notice that they're sliced into 20 little sections. So we're kind of pretending that, okay, this is the mitochondrial DNA, it's just a representation, and each little box represents 5% of that uh, mitochondrial DNA. So we said that from one generation to the next, we've got about a 5% chance of a mutation. So, uh, in class I use a random number generator, but here I'll just go ahead and, and kind of do things randomly. So let's say that from this generation to that generation there's one mutation. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in. Alright, we've got our mutation. Uh, but don't forget, this mutation will be inherited by all of the daughters that come after because, uh, you know, genes are inherited, even from mitochondria. We're not interested in the genes of the boys because they don't, once they have kids, their mitochondria are destroyed. So we don't, we can't really follow it that way. So this mutation that occurred way up here in, the, in this generation has to carry through to all the other girls. So let's do that. So in both branches of this family, on the left and on the right, we have inherited all of those mutations, right? That same mutation. So now let's go ahead and look at this next generation. Well, hold, wait a minute. We've really got these two branches. We've got the one on the left and the one on the right. So if we have mutations that occur from this mating right here when they have kids, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and throw a random mutation in here and see what happens. So check it out. We did a mutation over here. We chose a, a random gene to mutate. And that mutation is inherited by her daughters, okay, because she's going to have these kids. It is also inherited by the boy, but we're not illustrating that here. So those have to be carried through. But how about over here? Should we put that same mutation over here? And it turns out that no, you would not put that over here because we're really talking about a different side of the family. This is a whole different side of the family. So what we really have to do here is we have to uh, come up with a new mutation. So we have to actually add a different mutation for this side of the family. So we're just going to, you know, come up with a random mutation. Let's say it's right here, and it's in a different color. That means that these girls are going to inherit that mutation, okay? So we're going to see the blue mutations carry through this side of the family, but we're going to see the green mutations carry through this side of the family. Um, but then we have another generation here. We have more offspring being born. So we have more events to have mutations occur. So let's go ahead and add a few more mutations in there. Let's do this left side first. All right, so I've put some mutations in here. Um, they're, they're the same mutation. And, and note that I am not going to put that mutation over here because this is a different side of the family than this one. So that mutation is exclusive only to this side of the family. Let's go ahead and add another a different random mutation over here on the right side. There we go. So I've gone ahead and added this mutation over here. So if we take a moment to kind of look at this, we can start to analyze this, this sort of family tree and begin to see, notice a few things. Um, some things we need to be able to figure out is what percentages are shared in common and what are different between these different generations. 
So uh, remember that for the sake of this exercise, each dash only represents 5%. But in real life, it's actually much, 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 much smaller. It's about 0.00001%. It's a very, very small quantity. Um, so uh, what we're doing here is we're just trying to show, OK, how is this inherited? Let's start thinking about some percentages here. So let's look at this original female that we have in this family, and then her daughters. According to the way that this model is put together, each of these daughters inherited this one mutation uh, that was created during the fertilization process. We can assume maybe all these daughters are twins. I don't know. If, it, if they were different, if they were not uh, twins, it might work a little different. But we're just, t t to make this easy, we're just sort of going to pretend that they're twins. So uh, these daughters have 5% of their mtDNA that's different from their mother. However, the, these two daughters actually have the same DNA, even though theirs are identical. They're 5% different from their mother um, because each little dash represents 5%. So let's go ahead and indicate that. Okay, so one generation down, and that's 5% difference, 95% the same. Any genes that are not mutated, not affected, are the same. So now 5% change. Let's jump over here. Let's look at um, these grandkids compared to their grandparent. Now, they've actually picked up two. Right? They've actually picked up two mutations. They had one from their mother, and they picked up another one. So if each of those are worth 5%, they're actually 10% different from their grandparent. They're only 5% different from mom because they both got this red mutation, but they're 10% different from their grandparents. And then the same is true over here. This, this girl is 5% uh, different from her parent because she got this green mutation, but she's 10% different from her grandma up here. So let's go ahead and indicate that. So in this generation, we find that 10% of their DNA is different from their grandmother, and 90% is the same. However, it's always going to be a 5% difference between their immediate parent. And the same thing occurs down here at this next generation. These kids have picked up another mutation, which means that compared to their grandparents, they are 15% different. But they're still only 5% different from their parents, their mother here, because they still have that red mutation and that blue mutation. It's just the black one that has changed. The same is true over here. These kids are 15% different from that grandparent. They're 10% or 5% different from their parent, and then 10% different from their grandparent. So here you can see I've indicated that these kids are 15% different from their great grandma and 85% the same. Whereas over here, the single generation leap, we only have a 5% change from parent uh, to offspring. 95% is the same. We can also compare uh, kids from different sides of the family. So what you can see, what I've done here, is let's take these uh, two kind of distant cousins. We can see that although they share this mutation, this red one, this one over here, this black one, is different from the, the gene over here. This green one is different from it over there. So that's a 10% difference. But then you have these two as well. This blue one is different from that one over there. And this black one is different from that over there. So if I take all four of my mutations, multiply them by 5% per mutation, that's a 20% difference in our mtDNA between these two cousins. So we can look at this in all kinds of interesting ways and try to compare, well, how many mutations really are there? How many differences in the genes do we spot? So this is always, um, it can get confusing, but you know, if you just kind of try to follow along with it the way that I've done it, you can actually follow who's related to who. So for instance, I mean, we can tell that um, you know, all of these, these offspring are related to these two females because they inherited that particular gene. Um, so I hope that this kind of helps you to figure out how to use uh, a, 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 a table like this to kind of uh, uh, trace inheritance. Now, this is for mitochondrial DNA that we can only trace through females. But the question now is, is there another way that we can trace uh, genes through males? Because we observe that uh, DMD uh, shows up mostly in males. So maybe there's a way that we can sort of adjust this for males. So that's where we're going to be moving uh, next in our in our lessons here.